Welcome back, everybody. The new season um, hits. We made it to rank 20. Boohoo. <laughs> Since we were playing some uh, for Flensy decks. But also, the game literally got um, at the end of each season, extra medals and tickets are converted to boosters. Oh, yeah, that had to happen. There's nothing but that low currency to spend on. Well, let's, let's see. So, what we get. We have, like, no currency. Come on. Exchange. If they all go to. Um, they went to Kitty last time, but there was only six of them. Um, hopefully they'll either go to Kitty or um, Mirage we just got. Yeah, I went to Titania. So 324 turning into 24. That's cool. Titania's awesome. And here's the new season with the new mutants. Heck yeah. It's a screenshotter. August 2023 season pass. Big in Japan. They have Dokken, who I believe was invented by Marvel Puzzle Quest. Um... Son of Wolverine, supposedly. Well, I'm pretty sure that he's like a genetic clone made by Osborne. That's at least the Puzzle Quest lore. And then there's Mecha Dokken, Mecha Magneto, Mecha Iceman, and uh, Avatar pictures to go with that. Ooh, and a Wolverine card back, and a cooler X-Men Wolverine card back. Oh, wait, no, that's for the X-23. Yeah, there's only two. That, and an X-23 card back. That's super cool. Let's see which is the free, which is the pay one. Um... Yeah, we could actually put that on uh, one of our decks. That'd be cool. Oh, so Dokken is the paid card. And then here's the Muramasa Blade, because there's also a Samurai Dokken. Um, when this is discarded or destroyed... Wow, it's discarded or destroyed. Double Dokken's power. He can help the discard deck and the destroy deck, but that was already the, basically the strongest deck in the game. And it's going to get even stronger. R.I.P. R.X. Min. Victory will be even harder... We may stay in Iron League now. No, no, no can get us out of there. But like, that's goofy. But hey, at least I can use it in the Null deck with Wolverine and Sabertooth if I do bother to get this. Let's see what else is going on in this. Can I just arrow down? No. Let's individually click Dock and Boosters. The gold is free. This is free. That's always great. More Dock and Boosters. Mystery variant. This is if you spend $10. You can get this. You can't use gold though, which is pretty scummy. That'd be cool if you could use gold. Other games can, but this game is very limited pay to win, so they gotta make money somehow. And for the most part, all this stuff is just gonna be visuals. Now, it could maybe unlock some extra cards for you with these boosters, theoretically. Oh, the Magneto Avatar picture is quite cool. Um, but we'll see. And we will be checking out um, the store and Conquest game mode. We'll probably go to Conquest game mode next. Just because you guys are probably the most hyped for that. I know I am. Um, oh, the X-23 is the paid back. Yep, X-23. Very cool. So the Wolverine one will be the free back. Which is cool because we have Wolverine. We can do that with our Null deck. Give it the special Wolverine card back. Because of course it's in there. Substitute Sensei. Oh, that's for a Substitute Teacher. Uh, it could also be for Doctor as well. In Japanese, Sensei means both. It technically means Master. Anyone who's like master grade teaching you is sensei or just master grade at their uh what they do and you feel they have a um far greater understanding the field than you do you can call them sensei iceman boosters oh yeah here's mecha iceman Did i know yeah i kind of nulled over that let's let's go back and look at yeah here's mecha iceman mold over that really um, but yeah, here's Iceman up here. He might be a little hard to see, and he's controlling the ice to turn into a mecha. This is very cool. <laughs> it's a little sad it's locked in the battle pass. I do kind of want it. As you know, we use Iceman all the time. Although Iceman's a little questionable now. Echo could actually get, get us more wins, but Echo's insanely rare. Hopefully, she's been made a bit cheaper now. Um, I'm going to have to look up who's all in Series 3 now for this new season, but I know... There is at least Shadow King for mutants for us to pick up, and we could make a stellar deck. Lady Death Strikes. Nail Filer. Or Nail Filer. Lady Death Strikes Nail Filer. There must be a line she does as she beats the crap out of people. Dawkin. Stalkin. And here it is. Here's the free mystery variant. They still got the free mystery variant. And the free... Oh, this is Dawkin, actually! Oh, this is the Dokken one. 
Okay, that's why it's not exactly colored like Wolverine, although I didn't know, it could have been Extreme Wolverine. Dokken! That's cool! That still fits in the, in the Null Deck, too! So that's awesome! Because what's our background to the Null Deck? I'm gonna go look! After this, too. And then here's Mechadokken himself. Well, I almost feel like this is the color of Mecha him, but it doesn't have the cost of Mecha him. Maybe they haven't been heated yet. And there's just an insane amount of free freebies here. Which I did get pretty high in this, actually. I got at least at the 64s, I think. Maybe I've gotten higher than that. I actually should have looked. I didn't think to do that in a while. Okay, let's go over to Conquest, see what's new there. Let's check the medals. Oh, it's a new Wolverine! Ooh, it's anime Wolverine! Wolverine anime variant, the screenshotter. No, I don't really absolutely need this, but they've doubled the income, so we may be able to unlock this now. Hopefully this is still double the income. Hopefully they don't do that in the final week every time, that'd be sucky. The new mystery variant is cheaper now? That was 350 before, it's only 300 now. What, oh, but it made the credits maybe more expensive? Huh? Do not fist bump Wolverine. It's a pretty cool title. Oh, they made the gold cheaper. Instead of 1,000, it's down to 800. I think the credits are more expensive. That is goofy. Although I do kind of like this new eco change. That might be cheaper too. Oh, they made the new... Wow! They made the new avatar freaking uh, 1,500 cheaper. I mean, 500, uh, 500 cheaper. Wow! But is, isn't this net more expensive? No, the silver token... Where's the other mystery variant? Oh my word, they only put one... Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? They only put one mystery variant in here. You used to get... You used to get two. That is sucky as frick. It gave away too much free stuff. Wow, seriously? Uh, wow. Dude, is Infinity Ticket more expensive? It might be. The Wolverine Boosters? No, the Boosters might be on par. Oh god, look at this. 650 for this one? So, okay, that's for the random. 1500 for this one. What? What? It's not the value of two six fifties. What? Okay, I like some of this. I don't like others. Why did they remove the other mystery variant? That was so fun getting two mystery variants. It actually made it feel worth while playing it. What the heck? At least there's still one in here that's cheaper. That's cool. But what? The heck? What will we do? I guess we'll just go for the gold. You just go for the gold then. You go for this and the gold. And the Wolverine avatar. That's what you do. That's the most value you'll get out of this. And then and then the title if you really love it. We may, I may consider do not piss bump Wolverine. We don't really need this title. Let's be real. Although I kinda do want it. Just because it is X-Men related, but. But yeah, getting the exclusive dude, I swear this is net more expensive. I swear this is net more expensive. Although we could just buy these Wolverine shards, because these are the next cheaper things. We get these, we get this. Yikes. I don't think I'm gonna unlock this thing. I guess we'll just see how it goes. How lucky we get. It just depends how lucky we get. If the the currency is doubled though, so they may have doubled the credits to counter that. Weird, but why did they remove a mystery variant? I don't like that. In my Wolverine, though. There he is. We actually have the Dan Hip Wolverine, so we don't really need new Wolverine, but I would use the anime one, sure. But yeah, that's not the end of the world, though, if we don't get the anime one. We already have the Dan Hip one. Ooh! Stegronosaurus Rex! Isn't this guy an X Gene? Uh, isn't he an X Gene from Savage Land? Now we could get the sex gene here. Yeah, see, this is why I didn't want that dropping under 7,500. I actually thought this may have gone up to 8,000. Good on them for keeping this at 7,500. Well, I think it should stay at 6,000 technically, because that's what the Apocalypse thing was, but... This may give more of these, though, than the Apocalypse one. I'm not sure. Also, did, did Apocalypse come with the card back? I don't think he did. 
Stegron Kaiju. This is very, very cool. This is actually legit tempting. I actually do not have this card. Move an enemy card from here to another location. Oh, that's so good with Kingpin! Oh my goodness! We could maybe even re-trigger him to do multiple kills with Kingpin. Yeah, play him with Kingpin and Juggernaut. Could be moving cards over to Kingpin to kill him on final turn. Or turn six, I should say. Oh, Dan Hip has a Null variant. That's pretty hilarious. I should would use that, just because Null is so goofy. I would make it even goofier. Yeah, we have one purchase because we got um, Magneto. Ooh, this is a cool Atuma. That's a screenshotter. Oh, this is 30, 20, 3099 Atuma. I'm really curious about the 3099 lore. Oh, here's Chibi, Mr. Negative. And here's one of the variants of Mirage, not the not the one I'm looking for, so I'm not gonna pick this one up, but that's super cool. Very cool spectrum shot. It's a screenshotter. And with the cool Hulkbuster showing that off before though, I'm pretty sure. Oh, this electro thing. I've actually seen fought people with that. Oh, here she is! Echo! Echo, echo, echo in my heart. After your opponent plays an ongoing ability card here. Remove its ability. Oh my goodness, that goes way better than I thought she was. She does the whole zone. And it's only your opponent. That's more helpful than Enchantress. Oh, we only have 448 though. Are they going to keep Echo a Series 5? Like, theoretically, these go downward, but they don't always. Which is messed up. Every card should go down into Series 3. And then, um, so everyone can get them for free. That said, they'd make this actually a truly great card game. Oh dang, I'm torn now. And here's Phoenix Force. Revive one of your destroyed cards and merge it with that card here. Weird. I don't think we're allowed to pin. Oh, wait, no, we can pin. We can pin Echo. That would be allowed, actually. Hmm, and this just gets you a random mystery three. I do I do not recommend doing this. You can just get those for free each month. And here is Echo. I'm tempted to pin this, but I really I feel like there's gonna be another way to get it. Oh Spider-Man! Dang, we could make an incredibly great deck with Spider-Man. He's what we're missing. Dang! We could actually make Infinity with Kang if we use Spider-Man. And fifty grade deck, I fought one before. Well, look at look at upgrade Wolverine down here. With like no credits though. Dang it, that's right. We don't have Spider-Man, but I want Shadow King first. Spider-Man will probably be next though, because he is a, a absolutely X-Men adjacent. Um Professor Xavier sees him as a mutant. Even though his um he's a radioactive type in um in Marvel Heroes. Okay, we can upgrade day, I won't do that. We have no credits. Let's get 50 more. Why is this still saying there's one thing I haven't looked at, huh? Let's pull actually hopping into it. Oh yeah, there's always stuff to upgrade here. We just don't have the credits. Um Oh, we can look into this. See what's up with this. 40 boosters, that we can get. 250, this is all this is questionable. Loosely related to Wolverine. Ooh, I like that title, though! Dang, that's counterintuitive to the other game mode, though. I'd be, like, playing all day long. Ugh. Or just play this game mode. You can get a dock in Avatar. That's pretty dang cool. I'm not the hugest dock fan. 500 gold is just rocks. And this is it. The infinite dock, and so when we see this, this we'll know it's an infinity grade deck. Or at least player. That's pretty cool. Loosely related to Wolverine. I mean, all extremes kind of are in a way. Dang, that's probably for X23, um, Lady Deathstrike. 
Well, I don't know if Lady Dexterite actually has his genes in her, but I mean, she's still Weapon X. They're still through that trauma, siblings. Um, and um, Dokken, of course. I think that just about covers it. Let's see if there's any special. Oh no, there still is one more thing to check. Who's in the spotlight catch? What? It's, just, it's Galactus, Nimrod, and Spider Ham? What? Well, I'm not. I don't. I mean, these cards are all. All Infinity Great cards. Don't get me twisted. These are incredible cards. Spider Ham, like, whips us so badly. Um, on reveal, tran oh, in case you guys haven't seen this before. On reveal, transform the highest cost card in your opponent's hand into a pig, keeping its power and cost. Yeah. So what what the the cost thing is weird. The cost is up here, this is the power. The cost here um this would only take effect if something makes something cheaper. Then he prevents them from being cheaper. It's really brutal. It made me lose once. It was it's very rare for it to trigger and matter, but it can make you lose sometimes. And then here's pig, it removes the ability. Sometimes this will buff a card though. Like, he turned Giganto into a pig once, and it let me win the game, because Giganto didn't have to play on the left side, he could play anywhere. Just like I've won with him turning it into Magneto, where then Magneto's power doesn't trigger, because that would make me lose. Um, and here's Nimrod. If we had Nimrod in our Null deck, it would be nigh unstoppable. They would have to have the Echo counter, or Roguing, or Enchantress, um, Cosmo countering, um, and, um... No, Cosmo actually doesn't counter Null, although Cosmo counters the, the eating of it, which which will lower Null's power in the end. And then uh, and then also you would need, um, to counter him, you would need Goose. And then here's Galactus. This is just a super fun card. I've seen a lot of people play it. We've actually played him because Emma Frost gave him to us. And uh, we've won some games with beating people with their own Galactus. It's a very powerful card, very hard to beat, if played perfectly, because I believe you can, can Spider-Man and then Galactus. And then they basically can't contest if that's a final turn against Galactus. It can be very brutal. It can be very, very brutal. Um, Spider-Man works great in that style deck too. Spider-Man is just a great card in general. He's, um, let, let, let me show you what he does. Um, move on reveal. Move to another location and pull an enemy card from here to there. Wait, what? They changed Spider-Man. What? They entirely changed Spider-Man? Are there two Spider-Mans? I think they changed Spider-Man. Dude, are there patch notes I need to see? Unreveal, move to another location and pull an enemy card from here to there. They made him a move deck guard. What he did before was stop the opponent from playing a card here next turn. Wow, did they think that was too good? Because that Infinity guy I played was insane. But that wasn't necessarily wrong. You'd have to do that to beat the Null deck as that deck. Dang, did they weaken Spider-Man? Or am I thinking of Spider-Man 2099's power and they just made him look like Rake Spider-Man? But no, it was this card though. It was this card with this exact art. Whoa, 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 we're checking patch notes. Uh, they may not be out yet. I'll see if they're out for PC yet. Patch notes, they're mo they are definitely out. Okay, we're switching over to patch notes. Um, how long is this video? I mean, we might as well put it all in one video. Let's be real with these. Um, let me just switch over here. I'm just gonna look Jane for a second. Let's bring him up. Here are the patch notes. I think they really nerfed the crap out of poor, 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 poor Spider-Man. Although he does play with the other spider crew now better, so that's cool. A right, new feature, multi-upgrade. If you have enough resources, multi-upgrade allows you to select the quality you'd like to target and tap the upgrade button once to directly skip that quality level. Save your thumbs and save some time. Oh yeah, this is a phone game, that's why it's saying thumbs. Dude, that is incredible, for one. Incredible update. New feature, upgrade with gold. If you are short on credits and or boosters, 
but still want to upgrade a card, you can now upgrade your cards with gold. Up to a limit each day. There is a limit. Wow, this, this game is pay to win. That made it way more pay to win. You couldn't do that before. Although you could just buy credits with gold, and you could buy boosters with gold, so essentially you could do the same thing. I mean, that's terrible for new players, the fact this exists. Although new players are fricked anyway right now. This is, uh, it's still nowhere near as bad as, like, other games, other card games, but that's not great. Improved avatar selection flow. Tapping on the avatar in the main menu will now bring up the avatar select screen, allowing you to change the current dex avatar quickly. Oh, we may try that. Uh, when you view an upgrade upgradable, actually, let's just try that now so we can't forget it. Oh, yeah. Was this not always the case? Maybe this wasn't always the case. Yeah, there's all the avatars I've unlocked. I'm still trying to get Emma Frost. There may even be a Gambit one and a Rogue one. I wonder if there's not an avatar for every character. I mean, it's cool if there is. Oh, this is talking about Conquest. We'll check out Conquest later. In the next video. Um, let's get back to this. General, uh... Okay, now, uh, when you view an upgradable card in your collection and choose not to upgrade it, it will be marked as red and will no longer increase the red dot notification count. Oh, this is them just lowering the red dots to pop up. Oh, that's why we only have the one red dot right now. Balance changes in cable. Old, oh, 2 2. On reveal. Put the top card of your opponent's deck into your hand. New. On reveal. Draw the top card of your opponent's deck. Oh, that is a nerf. That may play the same, technically, but that is a nerf. Instead of you gaining cards now by playing Cable, you're just trading a card. Also, they changed it from bottom card to top card. Because before he could instantly... Wait, what the heck? He could counter... Before he would always steal... Um, yeah, they nerfed him. Before he would always steal someone's... I actually have used that to win. Because a bottom draw, he would always steal their... Um, Oh, what is she called? America Chavez. On reveal, draw the top card of your opponent's deck. Yeah, now I think she has a high chance of drawing other cards to pop up to the top of the deck. Oh, well, let's see how they... No, no, the change to America Chavez starting on the bottom of the deck was... ...predictably damaging to Cable. As drawing your opponent's Ch Chavez was usually good for them. Wait, what? They're saying this is a buff to him? I can see what you believe that that would be good, though, in certain deck types. Not you. Interesting. We didn't value that too highly because Cable's play rate was already low. But that was a mistake on our part. Oh, they didn't intend for this to happen. Okay, fair enough. Conquest has shown that players really enjoy playing with cards that can give them an... give them inform information advantage against their opponents. Ah, that's what they want a Cable to do. That makes sense for Cable's character. This is a simple enough change, but you were guaranteed to take a 6 away from them. That, that seemed good to me. This is a simple enough change. Just going to the other end of the deck. But, we've also gone ahead and updated the template to reflect the action Cable is actually taking, which is drawing a card. Ah, he always was drawing a card. I see. You can't play this on turn 6. On reveal. Change this location to Limbo. Here's the new- they changed our girl magic. This is actually in our deck. M -m -m magic 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 AKA Espa's novice. She opens a world- new portal, which she does all the time in Espoverse. Also Hyosung from Secret though. On reveal. Replace this location with Limbo. Doesn't work after turn 5. Yeah, because it's not going to work on turn 7 either. That's why you never see me do it. So this is better wording. In in my opinion. 
developer note. Our OTA on 720 mentioned this was coming, and here it is. This isn't a large change to magic, mostly just making her a legal card to play on turn 6. Wait, what? Wait, this lets her be actually playable? Oh, it does, because it says Limbo doesn't work after turn 5. Oh, this is a huge buff to magic. This is a massive buff to magic. However, it's worth noting that the PFX behavior has changed a little bit. She used to light up with fire on the last turn you could play her, but now that Corona will indicate whether or not you'll be able to create Limbo based on the turn count. Okay, I don't know if I'm in love with that change, but it doesn't sound that bad. Oh, Mr. Sinister. Oh, what'd they do to... I mean, Mr. Negative. <laughs> I just only think Mr. Sinister, because that's why I play Mr. Negative. Let's see what they did to him. What do we have? Give me Power 40 over here. I thought I'd make a mistake with that. Um, sorry about that. I had to fix those pieces up here. Makes way more sense. Hank McCoy is telling you this than Rescue. Um... Gameplay change caps cost at a maximum of six. No text change. Wait, what? I feel like this didn't change much. This should have... Oh, that wasn't in effect. This should have been in effect. Because the zone makes this go into effect. This must have been bugged. I wonder if you'll swap the power and cost of all cards in your deck. Yeah. The cap costs at maximum of six. Yeah, that's... I mean, that's probably what was happening. I just didn't say it. This is a minor change to improve players' quality of life by adding consistency to in-game interactions. The peak location has this cap, which it needs because otherwise many cards would be become literally impossible to play. When the location appears, Mr. Negative doesn't expressly need it because his decks are built to minimize power in, d in deck. However, it's intuitive for that location and this card to function the same, so we're lining them up. Plus, it makes Jane Foster's shells a little less risky. Oh, interesting. Rogue. Oh, they did something to Rogue! 3 2 on reveal. Steal an ongoing ability from a random card at this location. New. Gameplay change. Now triggers on reveals if the copied ongoing card had one. No, t no text change. Oh, this is a huge buff to Rogue. I don't know if this actually super matters a ton, but that's a buff to Rogue. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about, my favorite female he heroine. Yes, or heroine, however you want to say that. Yes. Yes. No triggers on reveal effects if the ongoing card had one. This may actually affect, um... Yeah, I think this will make you be able to take Absorbing Man's Fire. I could be wrong. We're gonna play around with that and just see how that works. Um... I may look at some cards to think about that. As mentioned, when we... Although I use Rogue all the time, so we're probably gonna... She, she may just randomly grab more powers than we want now, which that could maybe be bad. But it could be way, 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 way better. Because if she can get Absorbing Man's Power, that's kind of good? Maybe? Because it might take it away from him, anyway. Developer note. As mentioned, when we changed Mystique in the previous patch, Rogue is receiving an update to bring player's expectation around copying card text via on reveal in line with outcome. Moving forward, we expect cards that copy text when they reveal to consistently trigger the on reveals of cards they copy. Okay, I guess they'll explain it without really explaining, but I mean, it is what it is. We'll just test it and find out. Spider Man, old 5 4. Well, Spider Man was a 5 4 before? That's why it's rare to see him in Professor X at the same time. Your opponent. Yeah, this is a huge change for Spider-Man. Oh my, so we didn't even get to use this. We played against it a ton, though, which was cool. And that was by choice. I was getting the other cards. I could have always gotten Spider-Man as a free card. Spider-Man's here right now, though. Let's see if we really want this. On reveal. Your opponent can't play cards at this location next turn. 
On now his he was old five four. Now he's three five. I already looked at this. On reveal, move to another location. Pull an enemy card from here to there. Let's see why they changed this. Besides the fact that I did fight that king deck that was borderline, it was just legit the best stack. Period. Um, developer note. All right, this is a big one. Let's start on the mechanical angle. The previous Spider-Man incarnation was polarizing card. Was a polarizing card. They're just mad at Spider-Man. These people are children. Yes, yeah, Spider-Man's annoying, but it's a great play when they throw it on you, and you can work around it. Their counters do it too, because you can still move cards into the zone. I'm pretty sure. Maybe you can't. Like, I did, on occasion, get annoyed by it, but, like, that was just well played by them. Yeah, it cost me many a game, but that was just well played by them. It prevented your opponent from playing cards at a location, a frustrating experience. It was most popular following Wave into Galactus in Lockdown decks. Yeah, it can be even more powerful using Kang on top of that. Um, but, yeah, I was literally just mentioning that when we were looking at them, which, which both decks that use combinations of cards to, to reduce the total play space of the game for your opponent. We want some of that. We want some of that. The game needs variety of strategies, but we don't want those decks or even one of those cards to be the best in the game. Our best cards should be cool and awesome. Our best cards should be cool and awesome. Spider-Man is cool and awesome, how dare you? <laughs> That's Stanley's favorite superhero. How dare you say that? <laughs> no, I can show you. Um, uh, but you know who's cool and awesome? Spider-Man. Thank you very much. There's an irreconcilable dissidence in having one of the most popular characters in the Marvel canon attached to an effect we don't want to be popular. They just don't like how the game played that way. It did feel like you needed Spider-Man to be ultra top tier and how crazy Bronze League got. Uh, this may be a justified change. But you can have different game modes to bring back that gameplay. <sighs> Although I do understand why they don't want too many game modes, because then that'll divide your player base, but... They could also have special events to bring card back, back, back to the way that were, cards back to the way that were. Discovering Spider-Man in our game should be a great experience. Uh, since launch, we've also added more Spider-Verse to the game and seen players enjoy the theme of movement for those cars. Yeah, see? This this was an issue. I do kind of like this. I shouldn't bring him. I'd have no idea why the other Spider-Man acted the way they did. But they were move card buffs, and they wanted Spider-Man to be a move card buff, buff with the other Spider-Man crew. This I agree on. They're trying to give a thematic power to playing the cars together. This is exactly what this game needs. Although you could also just do a game mode for this. So we're making a change and bringing Peter in line with the rest with a new ability. We will return the old ability to the game on a new card? Okay, that's cool if they do that. It should be another Spider-Man, though. You could have it be a different Spider-Man. Although, maybe just a different card. Maybe. But for now, let's go with the no. It's not been adding much fun. Well, it's, 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 it is fun. I've lost to it tons of times. That is an incredibly great strategy, and I've countered it, too, to frick the dude over. Because you can play your powerful cards earlier, so then the Spider-Man just doesn't do anything sometimes. Although Spider-Man was very powerful. Him beating Professor X, even though they're essentially, the, they're kind of the same thing, um, was weird. Also, Spider-Man was just, like, technically a worse power than Professor X, which that was a little odd, too. Um, but it was more powerful. With with both, it was insane. With Kang, so you know where they're putting their cards, and you can just re blah, 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 redo the turn and throw Spider-Man there to frick him. Next, the turn after. It's crazy. We don't take this kind of rework to a card lightly. So, I'm glad that they ever did this to a card. It's a little sad at Spider-Man, because I bet a lot of you guys were using that. Um, although, I don't know, maybe you weren't, because you're watching me as X-Men. <laughs> but, um, so... But, like, you have seen me lose many a time to it. It was very brutal to our X-Men deck, especially with magic that makes a 7th turn, and then he would block us from casting the 7th turn into the 7th turn zone, because there's often only one zone left with how it fills up, especially because we have double P Professor X's blocking zones. Um, it was absolutely game-winningly good. I can understand why that would change that one. So we're happy to hear your feedback through all the usual channels. We don't intend to start suddenly remaking tons of cards, but understanding your feelings may help us better understand the appropriate thresholds for each action in the future. 
I mean, I really like how they're explaining themselves. This takes time to write this stuff out. Um. Oh boy, they're doing something to high evolutionary again. A high evolution attacks do seem ridiculously powerful. Well, let's see what this is. Is this a weakener or a buff? Let's see. Evolve the thing. You need high evolutionary in your deck to even get this, which we do not have, which I hopefully will get at some point. So I can show off freaking Cyclops being an absolute beast. Oh, well, they've been nerfed since then, but we fight that deck all the freaking time. You can find a plenty um, on my channel. And tons more gameplay is coming out, too. Um, I still haven't gotten up everything from the last season, but I mean, that's okay, because I've been playing so much stuff, I can barely keep the, uh, the actual uploads going to keep my, um, my hard drive. But yeah, I just haven't published videos, because I don't want to flood you guys' this poor freaking um, feed with videos. Well, speaking of which, I actually got a new sub. Oh, wow. We, we, sh we can shout them out at the end. Oh, I need a... Oh, there they are. Let, let's, I'll shout them out at the end. They actually have a name they have displayed. Yeah, it's a call sign, yeah. I wouldn't actually say someone's real name. Hopefully it's not their real name. I don't think it would be. With, that, with just the word that it looks like it is. Um, anyway, let's let's finish this up and then shout them out, because that should be the end of this video. Um, okay, so on reveal, afflict a random enemy card here with minus one power. We beat this once more. Yeah, this was kind of weird. Afflict three random enemy cards here with minus one power. Do this twice more. Yeah, I was mentioning that that was always worded bizarrely. When it could just could have just been worded like this. Great fix. Yeah, he wasn't technically changed. They just made this clearer. Afflict three random enemy cards here with minus one power. And that can roll all into the same card. Rare, but it can do it. Um... Development note. High Evolution has mostly landed in a healthy spot since we made the tweaks to Hulk and Wasp. Really? You think this is a healthy spot where it completely demolishes my poor X-Men deck? We stand virtually no chance of ever beating it. Really? Really? Dude, these developers, dude. Dur during the last patch. But this, w but this one also... Also, how you fix this is just give my X-Men a buff by being X-Men. If you think the X-Men are individually okay in a spot, you buff them with each other, like other games. DC Dual Force, cough, cough. Although, luckily, they're trying to buff Spider-Man up with this other Spider-Crew. So there is a slight change towards that. Um, during the last patch. But this, this is one small twist of the dial. Cyclops has been really strong still. Yeah, I didn't want to show that off. But we will... But, but we like keeping him strong in high evolutionary shells based on ensuring a character with his popularity has a solid and satisfying home. You see, they're caring about popularity, not necessarily balance. This is a huge issue. Although, Cyclops is necessary, because if you're going up against a Null deck, good luck! A Null Destruction deck, uh, or Kang, into um, double, literally double, although you do need the perfect field for it. I'm still not sure how the guy did. I'm still trying to figure it out. Because he may have cheated to beat me that game. I don't think so, though. I think it's Cilium made at the, the one cost free. I think is what happened there. Um, made, made his She-Hulks she free. So he could drop double She-Hulks with... Um, with... Uh, Infinite. But yeah, that, that was particularly good. But that deck was only super brutal because of the Spider-Man he had on top of that. And the Professor Rex and the Storm he had on top of that. Now Spider-Man will no longer function in that guy's deck, which is kind of sad. Because that was the strongest deck, but that may have just been known as period the strongest deck. As I felt it was, and now they've probably made it much weaker with no Spider-Man. He's going to have more randomness going on. They may not get his Professor X, he may not get his Storm to do the whole chain. Um, as is, we, beat, we got some games on him. We did beat him a few times. But yeah, his deck was just overall the most consistent I'd ever seen. So yeah, that's probably why they changed Spider-Man. Because it was brutal as frick. Really cool to see and play. A very expensive deck that guy had. But, um... Not in the... Oh, well, no, it's it's expensive just to, to unlock to a certain degree. I still don't, don't have Spider-Man. But that's just total random, technically. Um... And, oh, yeah, and Kang is quite difficult to get hold of. I got him without even one... Well, I got him just de facto just trying to get um, Mirage. Because I did four of the same spotlight. Oh, yeah, and you do want four spotlight catches to guarantee one unlock of a character. I should note that, too. I'll probably note that um, again, maybe at the beginning of each video, or when the X-Men pops up. But I will reiterate that one in my new sub. Okay, let's finish this out. 
because it's going to be a deep dive video, so yeah. Based on ensuring the character with the pup literally has a solid and satisfying home. Uh, the thing has actually outperformed Scott a bit lately. Oh, that's what they're doing. It's because they're not using Cyclops in the deck anymore. What? What? That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. You play both, dude. You play both thing in Cyclops. It's crazy to not play one. What else were they filling that role with? I'm not even sure. And this change also makes the the afflict curve from Wasp into Cyclops nerf to the thing's strength as a single card attacking a location. Oh wait, no, we missed a line here, I think. Wait, Cyclops and thing distributing minus one power to one more card at each stop. It's a slight buff to Abomination. Oh, maybe they're saying this only went... No? Oh, once again, Abomination should be in this deck. I guess they're just saying that the deck overall got stronger. Uh, fix the bug that would cause Mirror Dimension to repeat morph into another Mirror Diven Dimension in a loop. <laughs> <laughs> Fix the bug that would cause players to get stuck on an old season pass. Oh, this is the worst. Thank God they fixed this. Oh, I feel terrible for those beeps. It didn't happen to me, but I feel terrible for those beeps. Performance improvements to UI bugs. Oh, heck yes. Double thumbs up for performance improvements. You've seen me lag out. Let's see if that happens before with all the cards I have now. For Windows, controller, and arrow keys. For Windows, controller and arrow keys are unsupported. This may impact Steam Deck usability as it will only be usable with touch controls. Ouch! That's bad! They know about it though, I'm sure they'll fix it soon. Using multi-upgrade only counts as one upgrade for the upgraded card mission. Okay, that's great to know. I'm sure they'll fix that soon too. Um, I mean, I gave you guys my thought. I don't really see any point of saying this. I may come back here and see how I like Rogue's change, if, that's, if it's necessary. Probably not. I think that's just for the betterment of the game. Rogue changing like that. Um, especially knowing how powerful Echo is now. Like, oh my word, we need Echo over Iceman. Iceman's one of my favorite dudes. Bobby Drake, dude. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let's end it out with Spider-Man. He got that absolute change. I hope you liked what you saw. Please hit the like button and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more content like this. And some conquest action coming up. May your tail eternally... Be retold. See you next time. Later. Stay marvelous. Oh, and shout out to my new sub, Su Super Space Capital R. Super. Welcome. Thank you so much. Oh, we can remove this jank too. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, catch you next time. Excelsior!